Uh, thank you, Chancellor Manukin, for your inspiring words. Rise Earth, what an incredible announcement. We are so thrilled that you made that announcement here, um, and it's going to lead to so many cool things. We're truly entering a, a new world for sustainability at UW-Madison, and it's so wonderful to have our chancellor leading the way. So thank you. Um, yeah, quick, quick round of applause again. Thank you. So I'm, thanks for being here. I'm Nathan Yondel, uh, Associate Director of Sustainability. I'm delighted to moderate this panel on the new UW-Madison Sustainability Goals, um, which were announced in February, as you just heard. Um, this afternoon, we'll discuss and celebrate uh, not only the work that we're doing now and into the future, uh, but the years of effort that have gone into making this moment possible. Um, truly, as the Chancellor said, it takes a village or a township or maybe a whole campus so I'm going to turn to our panelists in just a moment, but um, let me first pause to say thank you all for being here. Thanks to my amazing EarthFest organizing colleagues. It's been a journey since July, and here we are. Um, and thanks to our fearless leaders, fearless leaders in the Nelson Institute and Facilities Planning and Management. Um, I also want to note or underscore that this is not your only opportunity to interact with the goals during EarthFest. You already heard about one of them, but we have three other related goals events coming up. So one of them Matt uh, mentions on Wednesday at three, um, a sustainability research networking and brainstorming session, which is connected to the research goals. Prior to that, uh, Tuesday at noon, there'll be a campus community meeting on our utility and energy future, which is connected to our uh, net zero emissions goal. And then on Friday at both 9.30 and 3.30, we have two options, there'll be workshops where we're collecting feedback on our zero waste goal. Um, I really hope you'll consider attending Bring your friends, bring your colleagues, bring your faculty um, to one or any of those events. Uh, and of course, there are many other EarthFest events, but as far as the goals ones goes, and offering your input and feedback as we strategize and, and plan for the coming years. Okay, with that preamble, um, I'd actually like to start by having the panelists introduce themselves. So we'll start at this end and go down. Missy, I take it away. I'm Missy Niergaard. I'm the University's Director of Sustainability. I'm Andrea Hicks. I'm the Director for Sustainability Education and Research, and I'm also faculty in Civil and Environmental Engineering. My name is Anne Turlock. I'm an Associate Professor in the School of Business and have been affiliated with the Office of Sustainability in the past. Um, I'm Katie Peel. I graduated in 2019, and I was an um, intern at the Office of Sustainability and a former chair of ASM Sustainability Committee. Hi, everyone. I'm Sanaa Zalai, and I graduated in 2020, and I was also a Office of Sustainability intern and a former ASM Sustainability Committee chair. Hello, everybody. My name is Christina Tracy. I'm a current senior here, um, and I am the current sustainability chair for the Associated Students of Madison. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mark Mikowski. I'm a PhD candidate in the English department. It's been like seven years or something absurd like that. Uh, and I, for the last three years, I've written stories about sustainability efforts on campus for the Office of Sustainability. Hi, everybody. My name is Ian Ailey, and I work for the Office of Sustainability on a program called the Green Fund that supports student ideas to improve campus sustainability. Great. Thank you so much. So the plan is I'm going to ask um, about five questions. We'll see how our timing goes and kind of work my way through these lovely panelists. Um, and then hopefully we'll have a few minutes for um, Q&A at the end. So let's start. Let's start with a big topic here. Missy and Andrea, you, are, you two lead the Office of Sustainability uh, along with Matt and um, are at the forefront of this initiative, this amazing new initiative that was just announced. So I'm hoping you could each talk a little bit about the goals. Um, how are they going to move UW-Madison forward um, so that we can not only deal with the kind of scary crisis um, that we're facing with the climate, but also find really exciting opportunities? So I'll start, um, and I'll talk particularly to the education and research side. So as everyone knows, education doesn't only happen in the classroom, right? Our campus is a living, breathing sustainability laboratory. And so when I think about these goals, I think first about the new sustainability research hub, which Matt, who's hiding in the back, yep, talking about you, um, is heading, right? So when we bring more grant funding to campus around sustainability, 
We provide more research opportunities for graduate students and undergraduate students in their sustainability education. We also are producing more opportunities for the breadth of sustainability knowledge for our new graduate certificate in sustainability from the Nelson Institute for Environmental Studies, which is open to any graduate student in any major on campus, and our undergraduate sustainability certificate, right, which is all of these are add-ons to your conventional degree. These are more sustainability opportunities. But again, sustainability education doesn't always happen in the classroom. So we can think about things like our Office of Sustainability Campus Internship Program, which we've got several alumni from, very exciting. We can think about things like our new corporate internship program where students go and work with companies for the summer. And we can think about other opportunities like the Green Fund, which my colleague Ian Ailey will talk about probably a little bit later. And the breadth of the goals is really to reflect the complexity of what sustainability is. Sustainability is a systems approach. So what we're really looking for here is looking at a whole system. If we compartmentalize any part of the system, we degrade the efficacy of all of it. Um, and especially in an institution of higher education, it's really important that we have applied research, right? students get to work in real world problems, our researchers get to do real world things, and that we practice scholarship. So one of the priorities for the program and Andrea's priority is to really develop interdisciplinary opportunities. So as you've seen from throughout the day, it is really complex. There are a lot of topics in here. It can be really intimidating to go talk to an engineer that is speaking a language you can't even begin to fathom, but you have to engage in that because you're part of the solution. So we wanna give our students those opportunities moving forward. And every time we graduate a cohort, they become our colleagues in the real world. So it is an amazing opportunity for all of us to grow and amplify the, the work we do at the Cape. Thanks so much. So I was really happy to convince Ann Turlock um, to join us today. Uh, and who I've known um, my, my whole time at the Office of Sustainability. Um, you know, you've been uh, involved with the office in some way for about a decade or so, I think. Um, and, and the point of this question is that, you know, I want to recognize that these goals are not the product of just the last 18 months, although it's definitely been a real push for the last 18 months. Um, but they're the culmination of, of years of effort and advocacy, and that's going to kind of be a theme going through the next couple of questions. So, and you know, you're one of the people on campus who I think can speak to the sort of history of sustainability. Um, and so I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about how you've seen it uh, sort of wax and wane as a priority. Um, and, and if you can bring in maybe a little bit of your vantage point from the, the School of Business. All right, let me try this. So okay. let me step back. So Office of Sustainability, about 10 years or so old. Let me step back 20 years when the business school hired me with a PhD in environmental science and management. They hired me despite this degree, not because of this degree. Today, we are trying to hire people with that degree in the business school. So that is a big arc sort of 20 years ago to today for the business school. In terms of the Office of Sustainability, so about 10 years ago it was created um, in response to the task force um, that suggested that we should have a Office of Sustainability. And let me use an image that Provost Isbell uses quite a bit. He talks about campus as this um, aircraft carrier, not just campus, UW-Madison, that he is trying to get to go in a certain direction. So that task force created the Office of Sustainability back then, and it was a dinghy, an inflatable <laughs> dinghy. And so we were put on this dinghy, and the things that we were trying to figure out was, first of all, we needed bodies on the dinghy, and the bodies that we had initially were folks where the sustainability part was an add-on to whatever other, other task or job description we had. So we had to get people, we had to figure out, and I look back on some of my notes from the meetings, we had, we had to figure out what are we actually supposed to be doing and importantly, where are the boundaries? What do we not do? Because again, we were a dinghy, there wasn't much 
horsepower yet, right? And so that was the thing we had to figure out. We had to figure out how to, we created or incubated uh, the sustainability certificate, certificate Andrea mentioned, but it's an office of sustainability. It's not an academic unit. It couldn't really administer or house it. So we had to sort of toss it to some unit on campus. It was a bit of a hot potato game initially, like who wants this? Sort of trying to figure out where does it fit best? And um, so then there were, continuing with the dinghy thing, eventually we sort of got pedals and then we started pedaling, but not necessarily everyone in the same direction <laughs> as we were trying to figure out what are our goals, right? And over time that was sort of, there was some convalescing around certain goals and we were picking up speed, um, staffing classes, staffing the certificate, hiring into the Office of Sustainability. And one thing I wanna really highlight is the one area where we succeeded right from the get-go was always when we followed the students. The intern, the student interns, that program was one of our early efforts and it, it was the strongest effort, the best effort really. I, I, I <laughs> Now where there are many good efforts, but I feel the same applies to the business school where when we follow the students and follow their lead and, and respond to their calls, good things happen. And um, uh, yeah, that was sort of, a, it's sort of a beacon there really. So, and then by today, I feel the Office of Sustainability has become this beautiful, powerful freighter, wind powered, that is sort of motoring along, and it's very cool to see, like inflatable dinghy to wind-powered freighter. I, I like these metaphors, this is great. Um, you also queued up the next piece so well, because I, I say this to everyone, people say, oh, what's your favorite part about working in sustainability or working at UW-Madison? And it's, it feels now like a throwaway line because I've said it so many times, but working with students is truly the thing that kind of gets you up in the morning, makes things exciting and, and inspiring. And so it's our privilege, my privilege, to have two of our recent um, alumni on this panel, um, Katie and Sanaz, and um, thank you both for being here and making the trip out. Um, both, as you heard, were ASM sustainability chairs and Office of Sustainability interns in their day, um, and both now work or study in the sustainability space. So Katie and Sanaz, maybe you could tell us a little bit about you know, your involvement in sustainability efforts on campus while you were here and, and what this, what does the, the announcement and maybe even some of the specifics of these goals sort of mean to you now that you're coming back? Um, yeah, so back in uh, 2017, 2018, 2019 when I was a student here, um, I was part of uh, those grassroots efforts that um, started from the bottom up with students and um, you know, we got together through our student government, through our extracurriculars, and talked about what we want to see on our campus and in our community, um, and then figured out a pathway to try to get there. And, you know, it was tough at times because you would hit a roadblock here and have to redirect. And um, one of those um, initiatives for at least my time here was um, getting more sustainability course offerings at um, in all different uh, colleges and um, every different discipline because really sustainability is an interdisciplinary subject at its core. It, it doesn't really exist in a vacuum and that was really what we were trying to push. Um, and we were really just trying to get meetings with professors or deans who were able to advocate for us um, in different colleges. And so to hear uh, Chancellor Manukin today say that eight different deans helped sponsor these goals um, made me so happy to hear that, you know, I think one of your fears as a student um, you, when you're leaving is, okay, I really hope those four years that I put in um, was doing something and was meant for something and trusting um, your community and the faculty and staff here at UW-Madison to continue that momentum and they really did. So it means so much to me to see that that's happening and makes me very proud to be a Badger. Um, uh, I agree with Katie with all those sentiments. Um, I followed in her footsteps after um, she graduated and did the internship program and was the chair. And it was probably the highlight, I would say, of my undergrad experience. Um, a lot of the campaigns I worked on, I look now at the goals and I see that 
or things that we were trying to push for like three, four years. Um, so I was really excited when Nathan reached out and uh, made me aware of these new goals that were happening. Um, I think when I was chair, I remember doing the sustainability education requirement campaign as well. Um, I think I was the second chair to author Clean Energy by 2030, and I'm sure there's been a couple others after me that have done it too. Um, so it's really cool to see that the university is listening and taking um, the initiative by students and pushing it forward. Um, and as Katie said, we were really just trying to get meetings when we were um, chair. So it's really, really cool um, that those meetings have happened and they've um, brought about some really great goals. For some of us, meetings are the bane of our scheduling existence, <laughs> but you know, when you're a student, it's like, just get me in the room. Um, so we also have two current students here, uh, Christina and Marek, um, and I would love to hear from you two about how you feel that students, I suppose, in the last few years have helped drive the creation of these goals, and, and um, Christina, particularly, you have been, been part of that. Um, what kind of interest as well do you see from the student body um, going both, you know, sort of leading up to the goals and going forward in sustainability? So... I don't wanna repeat anything too much, but um, like many of us have said, these efforts have been happening for years. Um, particularly last year, Jacob Bright, who's in the audience here, um, the sustainability chair before my time, and Maya, I see you're here too. Um, Jacob and Maya and Winston and others who were involved in ASM Sustainability Committee got together and created a subgroup um, during the absence of the Sustainability Advisory Council. Um, they called themselves the Student Sustainability Advisory Council or Sustainability Student Advisory Council, double sack. Um, and they looked at our STARS report rating and they found a lot of gaps in our rating compared to other universities and decided that you know the university needs goals to help drive our efforts moving forward. So they spent countless hours compiling a report um, and they got a meeting with the chancellor's office. And um, meetings are really exciting. The chancellor came to our ASM, sustain or ASM meeting, the first meeting of the year, and said that her chief of staff was so impressed by the sustainability committee's efforts in that meeting. And I believe that that is why we are here today, um, because of student leaders like us and those that have come before us um, speaking up for the student voice. And like some of the faculty have said, Students do drive those efforts and they will continue to drive those efforts. And like the chancellor said, um, we are already doing these things you know, that are in the goals, but the goals give us more institutional support. Um, they give the students more credibility when talking to administrators about the campaigns that they're working on. Um, and they give us more drive moving forward. So I have no doubt that students' efforts will continue to drive our work on the goals um, in terms of you know, the interest from students, both Jake and I created surveys kind of assessing student interest that was sent out to all students via their a the ASM email. Um, and it sounds like what Jake found was that a lot of students are feeling disconnected from sustainability in their coursework. And, you know, that's business courses, English courses, engineering courses across the spectrum. Uh, and then also for my survey, I found that um, a large, significant amount of students took sustainability and environmental initiatives and opportunities into account um, in admissions decisions. So how much opportunity there, there is at a university in sustainability and environmentalism drives admissions decisions for a lot of students. And I also found that a lot of students feel that their negative or their mental health is negatively affected by the university's lack of action to address the climate crisis. Um, from the comments that I read from that survey, I found that a lot of those feelings were due to disconnect between students and university administration and knowing what's going on. And I think that these goals kind of, first of all, give us a language for talking about the efforts that are happening. They also show students that we have these goals and then they provide us a framework to like move forward and accomplish them. Um, so there's definitely a lot of interest. We have a sustainability roundtable every semester, which I believe was started a couple years before us. Um, and we invite students from sustainability organizations around campus. We had like over 50 student organizations represented in the fall. Um, and mind you, some students are leaders in multiple student organizations. So, uh, but that was incredible to hear students talking about what they care about. And you know, we have an open mic and everybody has something to say. So. Definitely something that students are continue to be interested in and working on, and we definitely appreciate the support of the administration in getting things done. 
Yeah, I'll just add to that by saying, uh, when I started writing for the OS as a grad student three years ago, I was obsessed with asking students on campus this question about eco-anxiety and despair, uh, mostly because I was feeling it, because I knew people on campus felt it too, partly because of the inaction and the lack of accessibility you know, to decision makers um, all over the world in every part of society. And after getting to know more about like student actions on campus uh, and how the small but like very committed and motivated OS staff was working to elevate the voice of students, um, I started to forget about that question a little bit because I saw how much it is possible um, to kind of set that aside or deal with it and still make really positive change on campus. And so these goals are uh, the culmination of years and years and years worth of student activism, uh, emotional labor, organizing, meetings, uh, projects, research, all of those things. And I think the first thing we should do is like celebrate that. Um, in terms of the future, uh, I think in terms of, I don't know, all aspects to sustainability, whether it's at UW-Madison or elsewhere, transparency and accountability are important. As Nathan mentioned, there are sessions during EarthFest where you can make your voice heard, um, not just students, but everybody um, with regard to these goals. So it's really, um, I don't know, heartening to see. Um, and hopefully that continues. And also um, one thing I wanna see and I've heard from some people too is continued administrative support uh, for student positions, uh, platforms for students to continue to have uh, an impact on how these goals are being shaped and how decisions are being made. Uh, and just to finish I, on a more reflective note, um, 2048 feels like very far away to me, just like it does, just like all these other big goals feel. Um, we're as far away from the 2048 net zero goal as we are from the year 2000. Um, so pre 9-11, pre iPhone era, it's a long way away. Um, earlier this week, I became an uncle for the first time. <laughs> and uh, a few days ago, like I went to visit my sister and I was holding my niece uh, in my arms uh, and just sitting here uh, watching her breathe softly. Um, I thought about the goals most randomly. <laughs> and I thought, you know, in 2048, you know, this child that's sleeping right now is going to be coming out of college Right, and it's going to be right in the middle of this, and hopefully, is going to be coming into um, hopefully UW Madison or just a world that's more positively changed by student action, by administrative action. Uh, and I was looking into this. It turns out more than 380,000 people are born every day globally, and so we think about 2048, and in a lot of ways, it's already here. You know, it's in the eyes of children being born in maternity wards every second in the earth, and then it's in the hands of the people in this room who are making. Um, definitive, passionate, and considerate action. And so we will see that continue. It's really great to see. And hopefully UW-Madison, we've seen a lot of positive things, continues to support students, faculty, and staff toward achieving those goals. And that's wow. why we hired him as a writer. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. <laughs> um, so, well, so, unless you want to respond to that, I can ask you the question. Ian is, Always well prepared, so he knows what I'm going to say. Um, but now I'm I'm really happy to turn to my um, colleague Ian Ailey. Um, Ian has been with the Office of Sustainability, I believe, longer than anybody else in its current iteration. There are people on campus who've been connected to it, but but Ian is kind of our OG in that sense. Um, he's also the manager of the UW Madison Green Fund, which offers not only funding but really robust support. Um, a, a support structure, really, for a huge range of, of student-driven sustainability projects on campus, and and Ian is is the the sort of the the center of that universe. Um, and in that sense, I feel like Ian, you you do sustainability more sort of holistically than almost any of us on this campus. We have our angles, but you're sort of pulling together whole projects. So maybe you can talk a little bit about the benefits that you see in doing that kind of work and. Treating campus as a living lab, that's one of the ways that we talk about it, but it's really building those relationships to make sustainability projects happen and to listen to the voices of students first because these projects are coming from students. Well, thank you. Um, I, and I feel compelled to sort of begin with gratitude because this is such a collaborative effort, so much based in relationship that um, looking around the room, a lot of a lot of friendly faces, a lot of collaborators over many years. In fact, I think everyone on the stage has, has contributed to Green Fund projects in <laughs> some way or another. So, uh, so thank you. And I echoing just this uh, importance to pause and just just feel what it feels like to have a moment like this of like this this is a big moment and this is this is a a, a win on the way towards something, a, a more beautiful world. So um, so yeah, so thank you. And 
what are the benefits of, of bringing people together? Uh, you know, if we're an airliner, if we're like a cruise ship, there are people that are working in the mechanical room, there are people on deck, there are people that are steering the ship, there's everybody. And what are the benefits of bringing people together into the same room? And I, I think that uh, it flows in many different directions. So uh, by listening to the folks who whose day-to-day -day realities are affected by these proposals, that that both helps us shape a proposal that is um, more appropriate to context, but it, it also builds relationships for, for future projects. So an example of that, um, recently the management of grounds, UW grounds, proposed changing out seven of their riding lawnmowers to electric powered lawnmowers from fossil fuel powered ones. It was a green fund project. We calculated the impact of that. Um, you know, what are the greenhouse gas emission savings? And that's great. Um, and we were also curious, what is the lived reality for the folks that are actually riding those mowers for nine hours a day? And what about the mechanics who are going to be taking care of these mowers? And so not only did the students do work on calculating those impacts on the sort of quantitative side, but we also sat down and had conversations with, with all those folks um, in grounds and also in, in fleet um, to hear their experiences. And it turns out that, um, in short, the mowers are uh, less less noisy, less they vibrate less, they get less dirty looks from people when they're zipping around because they're a lot quieter. Um, the batteries last as long as they need them to. Mechanics were, uh, they were concerned, they wanted to make sure that they received training so that they could have literacy, not only in internal combustion engines, but also in this, this new future of electric vehicles. And so that will inform all of the sort of future electrification work that we do on campus. Um, and then also it flows in the opposite direction too. So sometimes we have staff and faculty who um, have a problem that they bring to the Green Fund and we find students who can support that process. So an example of that is transportation services. Um, they wanted to introduce a live stream of when buses would be coming and going and they wanted to add lights to all their bus shelters. And bringing electrical lines up to each one of those bus shelters was gonna be really, really expensive. Some of them are pretty remote, so digging in a line would've been really crazy expensive. So um, we worked with students from Anactus and Helios, which are two different student orgs, and they went out and visited every single bus shelter and looked at what is the shading in that, that particular location and what's the solar potential there. And then uh, transportation services liked the way that their bus shelters looked. They liked the curved roof, if you can imagine the bus shelters. Um, and they didn't want uh, a solar panel that normally is this like, you know, rectilinear kind of like rigid piece of uh, solar up there. They wanted to have something that integrated with it. So they requested, could we look into curved panels? And so the students modeled uh, a series of flat panels to approximate that curve and turn that all into a series of recommendations that they passed back to transportation services, who then passed it off to a vendor who came out and um, installed 20 of these new shelters uh, last April. And then actually during Earth Week, another, uh, another 17 are gonna be installed. The parts just arrived today and they'll be installed this, this coming week. So, and then another 10 will come in in 2025. So the, it's very much an example of uh, our facilities friends saying, hey, we've got this problem and we have expertise on campus. Can we tap into that and have this win-win situation? And um, the Greenfoot also tends to catalyze projects that may never happen or may happen at a slower rate. So one, one last example. Um, so uh, our friend from Kohler was here, Lewis. I don't know, is he still here? Um, so uh, I know that he works in energy, but it also relates to toilets here. So... Um, <laughs> So housing, they um, have a policy of replacing any new, any new toilet is going to be a low flow toilet, one that uses less water. Anytime that they do a big renovation, they're going to replace them all with, with low flow toilets. But you can imagine that sometimes there's a, a bathroom that hasn't been renovated where a toilet hasn't broken. So there's this kind of smattering of toilets out there that are using a lot of water. So Andrew and I worked together on a class collaboration where students that were learning about life cycle assessment went out and actually visited every single toilet in all of the residence halls across all of campus. And just think of the smells. <laughs> <laughs> and found all of the ones that were using a lot of water. And so proposed to the Green Fund, let's, let's replace all of these. And 
um, you know, the facilities folks were like, this is great, you know, this is a, a learning opportunity, we would not have done this otherwise. And uh, one fun piece about that, it's a life cycle assessment class, and so we were thinking about the full life of that product, and, you know, it would save some water by replacing it with a lower flow unit, but, um, you know, typically these would go, these, these uh, old toilets would go to landfill. But we found an uh, aggregate crusher that was willing to take all the porcelain and grind them up and uh, replace that for the gravel that they normally would be using. And so somewhere out there, there is a road where you can drive on toilets. Um, <laughs> and we, we didn't have to have those go off to landfill. So, um, so these are some of, the, some of the reasons why sort of integrating together across all of the different worlds and all the different languages that are spoken on campus um, that's that's why it matters, and that's sort of the real power of it. And uh, you know, these goals there are a few that are operational. You know, there's the the energy goals, the waste goals, and then there is the in offering opportunities for education. And those two really are are they they knit together. And the student involvement, the research and education arm of our university can help us arrive at those. Um, at those operational goals and, and vice versa. So, um, so yeah, thank you. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. We have a few minutes left, but one thing I wanna quickly pick up on is this sense of gratitude, and I'm gonna do something just a little bit self-serving, which is there are, we tend in these types of events to thank mostly the leadership and then maybe sort of like the broad group, but I actually wanna thank my other colleagues and uh, other interns at the Office of Sustainability who are who do a ton of work to make this all happen. It, it takes the leadership of people like Andrea and Missy, but it also takes all of these people working in all these different ways, all these different tracks, whether they're working in energy or research or education or what have you. So I'm hoping that, and there's a bunch of you in here, those of you who are currently with the Office of Sustainability or previously would raise your hand so we can recognize you. All right, so unlike the previous panels, not to brag, we have a few minutes for questions. <laughs> so um, I would love to invite a few questions. That's not actually a dig. At those other panels were wonderful. I'm just happy to uh, have this time. And so I wanted to invite questions from the audience. Um, I think there was going to be a standing mic. Is there another way we want to do it? Oh, it's over in the corner. So if you have any questions for our panelists, um, please come over to the, to the mic and line up. And if you're shy, we can wait 30 seconds but I would love to have a few questions from all of you. Can I ask it from over here? Sure, you can ask it from over there. I can also repeat for other ones so we don't have to <laughs> mic. Is it working? It is working. Uh, with the new Rise Earth that was just announced by the Chancellor, how are you guys feeling about that and how do you think it will affect all your future goals and whatnot with uh, sustainability? So I'm beyond delighted. Um, much like when Anne was hired, although a few years later, the sustainability is not the key selling point of hiring me to be an engineering professor. So I'm excited because the more faculty we have in these areas, that means the more classes they teach. That means the more opportunities for students to take classes in their home discipline who are from people who are experts in these fields. It means more undergraduate and graduate research opportunities. It means more um, knowledge about this on campus. So I thought it was really nice that the chancellor said, you know, we have some excellence in this. I was like, okay, cool. You know, you noticed we're hanging out here. Um, but having more people means suddenly you're not in the dinghy, right? Just trying to like paddle hopefully in the same direction. Suddenly you have enough people that if every one of those people is teaching one sustainability specialty class, we suddenly have this huge amount of classes in different disciplines and different areas for students to take. So I am excited and delighted and all of the types of positive words that go along with that. Other thoughts? Only me? <laughs> a 
Okay, any other questions? And I think we can probably have you shout and I can repeat it if necessary. Please, sir. Just to make sure everyone in the back heard, the questions about aging infrastructure and how we're dealing with that. We have 400 existing buildings, right? If we, so we have 20, 26 million square feet of existing portfolio that we have to address. So in the true fashion of higher ed, we're doing some studies. <laughs> but part of what we do in sustainability is actually implement on those studies. So it's our responsibility and the responsibility of every dean on campus to start executing on these strategies. So having this as a, as a beacon is super important for us. So when we get a new College of Engineering building, when we get a new Levy Humanities building, they have really more stringent targets because we have to one, accommodate or account for our existing portfolio. So our new buildings have to do more work or less work, I guess, less work. Um, and we do that. And then as we go in and retrofit and remodel, those spaces also have tighter guidelines and, um, and restrictions. And then we're also really looking strongly at, you know, we know what we're going to do, or we, we think we know what we're going to do based on state funding availability over the next 10 years. So which buildings and spaces are coming down? What are available to renovate more su um, su sustainably? It's a hard word for my profession. Um, so yes, it is part of one of the, it's a major part of what we're working on. Great question. I will speak to this. Um, we have been talking about this already. Yeah. Uh, so like I mentioned, um, Jay kind of founded this student subcommittee. And it's different versions have existed of a coalition of students. There was WISCAC, um, which fought for divestment in the past. Um, and you know, a lot of student org leaders are at the forefront of these efforts. Um, so we are looking towards establishing a new coalition of student leaders that is geared around the goals um, and one that is going to be centralized enough so that efforts aren't as siloed and groups can work together, but also allowing students a space to bring their interests and their insights based on their niches, um, whether it be clean energy or food sustainability um, or zero waste, whatever. So uh, coalition building, I think, is the start for students. Um, and then, you know, using those coali coalitions and using the access to resources that ASM has to get in touch with the appropriate people um, and bring those ideas. Okay, I'll say something. Um, now I'm a grad student, and um, I feel like I have a lot of the same ideas I had as an undergrad. And one thing that um, when I was at the OS, we did is we started the Green Allies team, which was trying to connect um, different aspects of sustainability, in particular, social justice and environmental justice. So I think with the ever impending you know, doom of climate change, um, one thing that I would like to see as an alumni is the university really focusing on knitting the two together and um, looking at tons of different groups, not even you know, just the ones in the environmental realm, on how it can move forward and encourage collaboration between the groups and incorporate you know, environmental justice, social justice, environmental planning and management and everything. Um, so I think it'd be really cool to see the university go forward with um, whatever the students come up with next, honestly, um, as we've seen. But I would love to see a really like a mix of everything together. I'm gonna jump back in on this one. I don't know if this is an inappropriate time to announce, but. Is it? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're announcing. Okay. <laughs> um, we well, already so had one big announcement today. Okay, 
fair. So we are, like, yes. <laughs> uh, environmental justice is huge, and that's something that uh, I also think is on our horizons. And I think that um, we've started seeing more student organizations working in environmental justice issues and bringing that to the OS, and there might be an event coming up featuring that collaboration. So yeah, I'll leave it there. Okay. The, the event afterwards? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. We can, we'll adjust things. Yeah, it's true. You should announce it. Do you want to? Okay. Okay. I, guess I'll I did um, know about one announcement, but it wasn't in this order. Yeah. I do have to dash right after this because we do have another event going on. But um, so intersectional environmentalism is uh, an area of environmentalism that is focused on bridging social justice and environmentalism, environmental justice. Uh, and it was kind of, it's being headed by um, Leah Thomas, who is a young black environmentalist, wrote the book, The Intersectional Environmentalist, started the nonprofit. And one of the things that they are doing is creating earth sessions. Um, and those events tie in art and environmentalism and provide people an artistic outlet. Um, and they have listening sessions, music, et cetera. Um, and they just started a college or sessions framework. So we have been really lucky to have a connection um, to Earth Sessions and we will be bringing one to our campus um, at the end, a week after Earth Fest, so we'll give you all the time to reflect. Um, and then we're gonna celebrate with Leah Thomas, who's gonna be coming to speak, um, and art and music. There will be uh, music from a live um, UW grad and that will be the Saturday following Earth Fest. So mark your calendars for May 4th. EarthFest after party. <laughs> All right, and to close this up, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Director of Sustainability, Missy Nurgai. Gonna let Nathan sit, he's had a long day. Um, so, even if this wasn't on my script, wow, this was an amazing, amazing event. And I know from the outside, you're like, oh, UW-Madison does Earth Day and Earth Fest. For us, this was a huge collaboration across a lot of different, a lot of different departments that were always operating kind of independently. So uh, this is sustainability in action and practice. So thank you. Um, we are concluding this, this portion. If you exit out into our beautiful arts, there's more snacks and stuff out there. We invite you to spend some time looking at the Che um, Awards, and I'm sorry, there are gonna be the awards tonight. That's what I wanted. The winners are gonna be announced at 5.30, so make sure you stick around, you have a cookie, and you hang out, and then there's supposed to be a, oh, thank you, who's up the clicker? Thank you for clickering. Um, please take a moment to scan the QR code and provide some feedback and comments. We wanna incorporate what you do, that's part of what we do for sustainability, so if you have ideas for next year, and also, there are more events over the course of the next week, 50 more events. And so please find something that suits you, share the wealth going around. And I also, Christina is one of the organizers, but Melina, where'd she go? Oh, she was just sitting there a second ago. Melina Wynn is also one of our coordinators for the May 4th, okay, um, after party. It's this whole Star Wars thing, isn't it? May 4th, yeah, yeah so. Anyway, lots of great things going on. Thank you all so much for being here. Go out and enjoy things, and please continue to work with us as we tackle those amazing, amazing and ambitious goals. Thank you. <laughs>